is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Fella here on the Twitch chat liked the end of Raw with the Supernatural stuff last night. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But he knows that he liked it because he's bored of traditional wrestling. <laughs> Bro, Raw is not traditional wrestling. You're bored of Raw because the show sucks. And so you're looking for anything to make the show exciting. If Raw was a well-booked wrestling show, you wouldn't be appreciating the supernatural because it's different. You'd be appreciating the actual traditional wrestling show. That's not where Raw is. I was actually, I was, I thought I wasn't going to get riled up, but I'm already riled up here. Let's talk about this Raw show very quickly. Then I got to tell you about this Rumble, this thing they're get doing. Get him. Get him. So we had a Drew and Goldberg segment that opened the show. And whenever Drew and Goldberg were in the ring, it was great. But once again... Miz and Morrison get involved, and it absolutely sucks. It makes me not care about this match. Teasing that Miz is going to be involved, I don't care. I'm over it. Get this guy off my television. Now, with that said, remind me later, I do have an idea for Miz, if you're going to do this stupid stuff, but this sucked outside of when Drew and Goldberg just stared each other down. Why can't they just stare each other down and we move on? Then I want to see the match. You insert Miz and Morrison, and I don't want anything to do with it. So then we had Charlotte doing a promo. This led to Charlotte versus Shayna. They go 30 seconds and Nia interferes for the DQ. Then, of course, you couldn't see this coming. Mandy and Dana, who I never want to see involved with Nia and Shayna again. Well, they get involved again. They've only been beaten like 80 times. They come down. Lacey comes down with a six person. We get another bad finish, which I think was a botch. Shayna got herself counted out on accident. So they restart the match a third time. None of these were any good, by the way. And Nia ends up hitting Dana with a choke slam right in the back of her head. Looked like she almost killed her. So I'm sure this match is this feud is just going to continue forever. Even though Nia and Shayna have beaten Mandy and Dana like 55 times, but we still got to see these guys feuding with each other. We have a network exclusive with Ali. It's not a network exclusive if it's on Raw. Anyway, he doesn't like Kofi. Slap Jack face Xavier Woods. Xavier actually beat the guy. And then he got beaten down again. And Ali noted that he will be replacing Kofi in the Royal Rumble. So at least we know that Ali is in the upper tier of geeks. He can just declare. Unlike the lower tier of geeks like Ricochet and R-Truth that have to fight for a spot. We had the VIP lounge and Hurt Business can't get along. And then Riddle runs in and attacks Lashley from behind again. Or MVP or somebody. It doesn't even matter. It was a behind-the-back attack by this babyface here. Then, out of nowhere, they announce, Stick around. We're going to have an interview with Edge. Bro, Edge lost, or he, he left due to injury in May... He's been gone the majority of the year. They don't even advertise he's going to be on the show. They tell us in the middle of the show that he's going to be back to have a chat later. Sheamus and John Morrison was a good match. It was like the only good thing on the show match-wise. And then they had Miz issue a challenge afterwards. Because you know what we need more on this show is Miz and Morrison. A proven ratings draw. So Miz and Morrison face Sheamus. They double-team him forever. And then they beat him. The point of this, we're told, after like 25 minutes is, if two men face one man in the Royal Rumble, the one man's probably going to have a problem. I needed a 25-minute segment to know that. Flair and Lacey do a segment, and Charlotte just comes off as such a heel. But in her promo, she's trying to explain to us that I'm not the bad guy. Somehow Rick's the bad guy, because he wants to hang around with a younger woman who wants his advice. I mean, maybe there's more, but we have no evidence there's anything more than that. And then Lacey just walks back in after being... Charlotte snaps at her. Get out of this room! And Lacey leaves, but then she comes back and she punches out Charlotte. I guess I'm supposed to feel sympathy for Charlotte, but I don't. Truth is a geek, so he has to beat AJ to get in the Rumble, but he can't beat AJ, so he's still a geek, even though he's the 24-7 champion. We have another Alexander swing set gimmick. I'm over it. We have the gauntlet match. So Riddle has to run the gauntlet to get a rematch against Lashley, who beat him in practically a squash three weeks ago. So first he faces Shelton. Shelton has him pinned clean, but Cedric has distracted the referee, which allows Riddle to roll up Shelton and pin him. 
Then we have Riddle versus MVP. MVP says, hold on a second, ref. I'm not ready yet. The ref rings a bell anyway. And then Riddle heel hooks him immediately and beats him. And then finally, we have Riddle versus Cedric. At least Riddle won that one clean. But I'm supposed to care about a rematch of a match that I already saw two weeks ago that Lashley won in a, in a squash? I don't care. The only other good thing on the show was the Edge pre-tape promo where he vowed to win the Royal Rumble and go on and win his title back at WrestleMania that he did not ever defend because he was retired 10 years ago. And then finally, we got more magic. It's Asuka versus Alexa Bliss. They wrestle for a while. Asuka gets thrown out of the ring, and suddenly there's carnival music playing, and Alexa is going back and forth on this horse. There's a horse in the ring. So we go to commercial, and we come back, and the horse is gone. And the announcers explain to me, we blinked, and it was gone. That's very magical. Now you're going to say, well, Brian, it wasn't a real horse. Like, that makes a difference. It was a giant horse. It was the size of the Trojan horse. It doesn't matter if it was a real horse or a fake horse. A horse appeared in the ring and then disappeared in the blink of an eye, we're told. Then she gets thrown into the corner. This time the lights don't even go out. She's thrown into the corner and boom! She magically transforms into the old Alexa Bliss. She's in her old gear. Oh, she's crying. I'm trapped by the fiend. The announcer is in hushed tone say it's the goddess I'm like, bro i'm 45 are you kidding me then she transforms into the fiend alexa she stops selling anything from oscar and this by the way is a double champion oscar she's a pawn in this stupid gimmick making her look like an idiot and alexa no souls no sells all of her moves she puts her in the mandible claw and then Randy Orton shows up, and he RKO's Alexa, and the show goes off the air. So I think Randy Orton might be the Raw Women's Champion right now, but I'm not sure. I don't have this confirmed. But anyway, that was a show. Absolutely sucked. Absolutely sucked. And you know what's funny? What's that? When I was a kid, the Royal Rumble was fun. Like, you didn't know who was going to be in it. You didn't know, except on rare occasions, you would find out who the f number one entry was. and Usually you didn't even know that. You certainly didn't know who number 30 was. So last year there was the huge surprise of the return of Edge. Well, let's look at what's happened now. Edge just showed up on Raw and cut a promo and said he's in the Rumble. He wasn't even a surprise. He just announced that he's in there. Well, WWE backstage is also returning. Are you aware of this, everybody? They're doing a preview special for the Royal Rumble on WWE Backstage. Do you know what they're doing on that show, Mike? <laughs> I, I do. Actually, I do indeed. Well, they are going to reveal the first and second entrances for the men's and women's Royal Rumble match. And they are also just going to tell you who is number 30 in the Men's Royal Rumble. Got to get those backstage Bro, ratings up, pal. If I got inside information about who number one and number two were going to be and who number 30 was in the Men's Rumble, and I came on this show and I told all of you, who, you'd be furious. You'd be quitting. But they're going to do this on backstage, and the WWE cultists are going to talk about how awesome this is. So anyway, the moral of all of this story is, everybody... And we can listen to Mike here after the break. The moral of the story is one of the main questions that we got yesterday when we did a Q&A about the, the network moving to Peacock is, is this going to encourage them to do better? Is this going to encourage them to do better shows? No. The answer is no. Because it's not about whether the shows are any good or not. The only thing that matters is quantity. It used to be quality over quantity because you were trying to sell tickets and get people to pay money for pay-per-views. Now, dude, if you got Cox or if you got Comcast, you're getting WrestleMania and all these pay-per-views for free. It's no longer about quality. It's only about quantity. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. 
Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.